Hey friends, welcome back to another Multiverses video. Today I want to help you guys answer the question on whether or not you should spend your gold or gleamium on Gizmo. Now I'm sure you guys are familiar with like the format of Before You Buy, you've probably seen it on Game Rakes, and I used to do this series as well for Dragon Ball Fighters, and you guys seem to really enjoy it. And we're gonna do the same thing here. Now during the video in the background, I'll show you guys some Gizmo gameplay, some fights, but I'll also be showing you guys what emotes, skins, badges, and more you can get with Gizmo as of recording this video. And talk about his general playstyle, that way you'll know if he's right for you. So first let me start by saying I really enjoy Gizmo, but he definitely is not going to be for everybody. So if I had to summarize Gizmo in just a couple of words, I would say set play. You have a lot of different moves and a lot of things that you have to keep track of. And he's not going to be easy to pick up and play. He's one of those characters where you're going to have to be really okay with losing for quite a long time until you get used to his different moveset. Now he is a support character and what you'll find immediately once you start picking him up and playing him is it can be pretty difficult to go ahead and KO somebody because once again, he is just a support character. Because while other support characters in the game might have great KO potential, Gizmo really triples down on that support role. An example of this is his like little backpack move where he can just ride on the back of somebody. This is something that you'll find yourself doing quite a bit of if you're trying to really save a teammate. And the reason is because it offers different buffs to your teammate, where not only do you share damage with them, which kind of helps mitigate how much damage a single person on your team takes, but you also cleanse your friend of any debuffs they might have already had. Now when you're on the back of your friend, you can do various different attacks. That way you're not just doing nothing that entire time, you're still interacting and you know kind of playing the game. But once you're back off of your teammate and you're having to fight and you know scrap with the opponents that's where things get a little bit dicey you see when you're not on your friend's back you're really encouraged to kind of throw popcorn around the stage and leave it floating around that way later you can ignite one of your arrows and then shoot the popcorn causing a really nice explosion that has some great ko potential and cover some really good range but the issue is when push comes to shove and your opponents are really on top of you and they're not letting you breathe this becomes exceedingly difficult to do because not only do you have to get the popcorn out there. You also have to hope that you already have an arrow stored with a fire on it, and you have to get in a good enough position in order to actually hit the opponent as well. Not to mention the fact you have to hope that they don't push the popcorn away, because they can also affect where the popcorn goes by attacking it. And if they put it in just a really bad spot, well then it's kind of useless. Meaning you have to go back around and throw more popcorn and hope that doesn't get knocked around, and god forbid somebody has a projectile, because if they do they can get rid of your popcorn. So in that instance, if you see that that's happening in the middle of a fight, you have to resort to other gameplay methods which aren't really the strongest because Gizmo once again lacks that power. And sure, Gizmo has his umbrella which has pretty decent KO potential. Sure, he's got his down air into his up air which can definitely KO without any problems at all. Like he's got ways to KO, no doubt, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I just feel the developers really made Gizmo to be a team player. A character who thrives in the team game mode and less so in the single game mode. So when you go ahead to play him in the team game mode and you're going against a really competent team somebody who's like either around your skill level or maybe even a little bit better than you, you end up getting overwhelmed by them. And finding the room in order to use the tools that the developers want you to use, it can be a little bit difficult, causing you to kind of get your hands dirty in the scramble, and that's not where Gizmo shines. Gizmo does not shine in the scramble. About the best tool he's got for scrambling is the car, where you can just <laughs> mindlessly drive left and right and throw the car into the air, and that does work, don't get me wrong, but it's not always the right tool for the job. So let's kind of talk about what I really enjoy about Gizmo, and the things that I think really make him shine for people who enjoy this kind of play style. Since he's come out, he's the only character I've played, and I love this character, because when he works, he works exceedingly well. So far, when I've played as Gizmo, I've only found success with one play style, and that's really prioritizing that support role, just going all in on Gizmo's core mechanics and hopping on my friend's back and just attacking from there. That's where I found the most success. Ending games with like three kills and 300 plus damage, it's been pretty consistent with this play style. But if that's not the kind of playstyle you want, if you don't like the support playstyle, if you don't like taking part in some set play, then you're probably not going to like Gizmo. If you're the kind of person who really enjoys the set play, if you're the kind of person who likes playing that more backseat support role, and you're less aggressive and you're more on the defensive, then Gizmo's 100% going to be for you. Because when that kind of playstyle works, it works so well, and it feels so rewarding. There's nothing more rewarding than seeing an opponent who needs to get back on stage and you either A, throw a car at them, which is about one of the most fun things you can do, or B, you pop some popcorn right in their face and send them soaring off stage. On the flip side, I really get a kick out of knowing my, my friend is going to die, so I hop on his back, and seeing them just get right up to the blast zone and surviving, I love that. I love knowing that they only survived because I helped them. I, I, I like that whole entire team player mentality with Gizmo, and when it comes to other multiplayer games where I'm given that support role, I really enjoy that. So if you 
you kind of share that sort of mentality, if you enjoy support roles and you enjoy assist type mechanics, then Gizmo is going to be 100% for you. But regardless of whether or not Gizmo is your type of character or not, I would not spend Gleemium on this character. I don't think he's worth a Gleemium, especially since you can get him with 2,000 coins. I would say save the 2,000 coins and then buy him once you've saved up enough. Definitely would not spend Gleemium on this character unless you're a die-hard Gizmo fan and you know this is the play style for you. But dudes, let me know what you guys think about Gizmo in the comments down below. Let me know how you're enjoying him so far and let me know if you think he's worth the purchase. Maybe somebody who's new to the game will come down in the comments and they'll read what you gotta say and it'll help them make up their mind. If you're just picking up Gizmo and you want a good build for him, I made a video on a really successful build I made for him that focuses on that more support role. It's gotten me about three kills a game, which I know isn't really that support role. You wouldn't expect that from a support and it's also been getting me about 300 damage per game as well. I'll link that in the cards above as well as the end screen. But if you want more content daily, be sure to subscribe and check out these videos next and I'll catch you guys back here tomorrow. Thanks for watching.